Let's Andrew. Go. Yo. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing well, man. Just jamming, knocking out a bunch of work. Uh, there you go. Getting things done, staying productive, staying focused. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You said it. That's all you can do. Um, everybody, I'd like to introduce Andrew Silly, amazing yoga uh, yogi, amazing human being. Uh, so much light, so much positivity. And it's an honor to have him on. Just, just you know, pick his brain and just talk to him about his practice and like his motivation, where he comes from, and you know, how he feels about what's going on. So it's yeah. great to have you, man. Yeah, it's great to be here, man. Got so many epic people on here. We've got uh, Chandra, dope. We got my cousin. Kushni, Carrie Kushni. Oh, you got your cousin on there? Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's a producer for Aftermath. He's a great producer. Incredible. Awesome. Throws down epic beats. Got Brazil in the house. Much love to you Brazil. all. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm super Amazing, stoked man. to be with you as well, man. Because honestly, like, don't just ask me questions. People ask him questions as well. Shiva. <laughs> Oh man, um, this is great, man. This is, you know, it's been a long time coming. Um, I know you've like done me in the past, but now it's about you, man, and and like your practice and um, how are you holding up now? So, number one, like, where do you? How did you get into yoga? Like, what is your what is your story behind that? Yeah, so my story behind getting into yoga. Um, I was 19 years old. I was playing competitive soccer over at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And I happened to get an ankle injury from getting slide tackled. And mm -hmm. essentially, uh, my girlfriend at the time was like, yo, if you just sit on the bench for the next two to three weeks, you're just going to atrophy and your body's going to be worse off than it was before. So when you go to jump back on the field, you're not going to be as vibrant. You're not going to be able to play to your best ability. Yeah. So uh, she was like, you should come with me to Bikram Yoga because that's what I do. I go to Bikram Yoga and I, I've been going every, every day and, you know, it's wow. been really good. And so I saw it like make a change in her life. And basically after a week of sitting on the bench and her asking me to come every single day, I was really stubborn. Um, yeah. She finally convinced <laughs> me. She's like, look, if you go to the class and you don't like it, you don't ever have to go again. And I was like, okay. that makes sense. You know, like that yeah. makes perfect sense. So I finally went to Bikram Yoga, uh, sat in the corner of the class because I was late. They put me in uh -huh. the corner right where the – the air vent is where they're pumping in the heat mm -hmm. and I'm just sitting there sweating bullets looking at people double my age doing things that I couldn't do and I was like you know I'm 19 years old I'm supposed to be a collegiate athlete and yes. my ego definitely got to me there and it pushed yeah. me to want to stay in the whole class and then after doing the whole class um, afterwards the teacher was like you know you did pretty good for your first time like you should definitely come back tomorrow we're doing a 30-day uh, challenge and I was like okay so i went for wow. 30 days every single day after doing my first 30 day challenge i did two more and did 100 days of yoga straight oh, wow yeah. so that's an incredible transformation going from sitting on a bench to becoming who you are i mean that's that's incredible and this is why i do this because um it's really um intriguing to me to find out and hear people's stories of how they got into the practice and like you know what they're doing so wow that's that's amazing um same with me you know i, I actually took my first like bikram yoga class and i was like hooked i was like this is amazing. oh you did bikram like, yoga too so my many first, years. my first class was bikram yoga hey post a heart if your first class was a bikram yoga looks like oh. uh yoga by chandra her first class was a bikram yoga how many other people were the first first class bikram yogas bikram got out there man look at that oh, man, bikram Oh man, yeah. She put she put this. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. We have a question. Uh, someone wrote, uh, "For someone who's never been introduced to yoga, how could I start with the hopes of improving my posture?" I'm 23. I mean, I would say that the first thing to do is to start practicing on a daily basis. The only way to yeah. improve anything is to really have a conscious practice towards doing it. Um, so really putting your intention into what you're creating. And through that moving intention, you're creating literally a full on optimization of your mind, your body and your spirit, because you're, you're tapping into bringing that into a daily practice. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. That's incredible. It's amazing. It's a, you know, it, it's amazing that you, uh, you gain that awareness 
I understood that awareness when I did my first ayahuasca ceremony. Mm. Um, this is when I, I understood and felt on a deeper conscious level what that all embodied. Like once I did that session, that was it. Like my life completely transformed and still mm. on my journey now. So I understood and realized that, you know, I do actually want to, heal people through my movement or through whatever the the collective movement i really want to heal and so that's just where i am and um exactly what you said i felt and understood that whole mind body and spirit connection through aya yeah yeah i feel like plant medicine is very essential like we forget how powerful plants are in being here not only to be of service to the world but also to provide us with nourishment like absolutely uh, if, if you look at a fruit, a fruit is literally crystallized sugar and sunlight. Like that's mm -hmm. like the most incredible gift that the world that's can incredible. give. That's incredible. Like, you know, like people forget that like plants were here way before we were here. And exactly. they're here to help guide us into a more harmonious way of living. Like exactly. everything eats plants, you know? Exactly. Uh, so, Romy, do you ever feel Aya calling you back? Yes, she's calling me. Yes. I, I feel like I want to do ceremonies for the rest of my life. It completely changed my life. And before I was really fearful about that. But I feel like I feel like if, if everybody on the planet could have experienced this, this incredible technology medicine, the That's world strange. would change for sure. Like yeah. so much. Like I understood how much more um, connected to Gaia I was after I, uh, like I understood the plants and how everything is interconnected, uh, the many mm -hmm. ecosystems and how advanced everything is, but it's primitive at the same time. And the highest vibration is love. Like that's the highest default vibration, which is love. And this is something that you always share and what you express 24 seven daily. And this is why, um, I definitely, you know, wanted to have you on because what keeps you motivated? What keeps you positive? Like, what is what is the the energy behind this? Uh, I would say that I'm constantly connected. Like, my goal is to stay on the pulse of life. Uh, meaning, every single day I wake up, I do my meditation, I write um, a lot of poetry. This morning, I wrote a poem that I'd love to share with everyone who's on today. Please, please and share. I'm, I'm always listening to music. You can hear there's music in the background. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Day. There you so, go. There you I think go. That music uh, is a really great way to keep the vibration around you, the sound around you, high vibration, and like, I mean, just feeling comfortable. Like this is this is this is how I live. Yoga mat, foam roller. There you go. You know, I got. I just finished uh, my glass. I had some high vibration goodness in there, and then there just you go. like fruit. Fruits and smoothies, and like keeping That's the vibration it. high. You know, it's like you, you want to be high vibration, vibration high. high vibration fruit. You got to eat by high vibration foods. You know, like these are incredible ways to tap back into nature. This is nature's gift right here. You know, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Andrew, you, you, you are it, what man. you eat. <laughs> you are what you eat. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, I just wanted to ask you: um, Were you always a vegan? And and if no, like, how did you get into it? So this this person discipline discipline two four seven three six five. <laughs> That's a good. I like that. I like that screen name. Now that I read the whole thing, it makes more sense. But uh, um, this person asked me. He's like, oh, like I saw your documentary about your parents being Rastafarian, and so I'm mm -hmm. from Barbados originally. Both my parents had dreads down to their back. I had wow. dreads down to my back up until I was 17 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, essentially, I would say that the eating part was instilled in me from a very young age that you eat from the earth. You only take what you need. Um, you know, I used to watch my grandpa climb the coconut tree, chop down the coconuts with a machete. I watched my grandpa go out in the back and wring a chicken's neck, break its neck, chop its head off, bam, you know, and then he was boiling the chicken and making that for dinner. And you only ate what you needed. There was no waste. Every single time that we ate food, everything on the plate had to be done. Everything. Like Absolutely. you didn't not you didn't leave the table if you had like a grain of rice or like a little bean or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, you eat it all. Exactly. So early on I was taught the value of food. And I think that when you're taught the value of food, you understand where it comes from. 
Um, we never ate any beef or any pork because on the islands, it's not very common, or at least during that time, it wasn't very common to eat beef or pork. And then when my parents came to America, I was never raised with beef or pork. None of that kind of stuff was around. Um, so only fish and chicken. And then by the time that I was 19, I was uh, going to university, learning a little bit more about uh, microbiology and really getting more into the body and the science and the whole depth of how the nutrients actually assimilates into your body and how it's actually used as energy. And I just figured out that, you know, the smaller that we go, the more energy that these, these plants have, you know, Absolutely. so the algaes and all, all those different, like really, really small, minute plants have so much nutrients. So I'm like, okay, like this makes sense to me. Um, and actually I had another girlfriend of mine who was doing a senior project mm -hmm. and her senior project was to put, um, five different soccer players on different diets. So one of us was on, the uh, Atkins diet, another guy was on a paleo diet, another guy was on the pyramid diet, which is the USDA uh -huh. diet, another guy was on a vegetarian diet, and I was on a vegan diet. I didn't choose uh -huh. the vegan diet, just randomly happened to be that way. We all ate the same amount of calories, slept the same amount of time, had the same soccer practices, had the same hours of uh, activity. And after 90 days, I ended up having the highest uh, uh, muscle to fat ratio, meaning like my muscle was more than my fat. And then I also um, had the best um, body mass index. And I was just like, this makes sense. Like, I'm just going to keep with it. And I've been vegan ever since. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. You are what you eat. So true. true. You know? Yeah. You, you are, you are, you are uh, who you hang out with. You are a byproduct of your environment. And most importantly, what you eat. Uh, we have some amazing questions. Um, I saw the funky documentary the other day, Good Stuff, and that's from Discipline247365. Yeah, and yeah, the Fungi documentary. Have you seen that? Have you seen Fantastic No, what Fungi? is it called? No, Fantastic I didn't see it. Fungi. Okay. You guys need to watch it. It's incredible. Oh. It's incredible. Well, Hands down, one of my favorite documentaries I've ever watched. Between uh, Fantastic Fungi, and then I would also put up there um, uh, Ram Dass' documentary, which is called Becoming Nobody. And then the other one that I would put up there is The Inconvenient Truth. So The Inconvenient Truth is by Al Gore. That one came out okay. a while ago. Yeah, um, I saw that one. He came out with a new one that's really, really good. Uh, and then the other one that I would also recommend is, uh, have you seen uh, Game Changers? Yes, I saw Game Changers. And, and, you know, that just like reinforced my whole belief behind being a vegetarian, for sure. I was like, yeah, of course, of course. It was, it was really mm -hmm. powerful. We pop yeah. documentary. We have another yeah. question. Um, yoga with Zaz. I think it's so healing to bring unity to the body and to see the body's forms as beautiful. What we put into ourselves has to be impact. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and from Yabuk, one WCK advice for getting out of a rut. I let you ask. Best advice is like wake up every day and get in nature. And I know it's like hard to say right now during this whole, you know, quarantine, wherever you are, it may be hard to get in nature. Maybe it's turning on, you know, a nature documentary. Maybe it's turning on, you know, planet Earth. Um, maybe it's, you know, giving your plant in the corner of your room some water. Um, literally, just like do your best to get in tune with Mother Earth. Get your feet exactly. in some grass. Mm -hmm. Look at the Ground sunrise. You. Watch the sunset that brings us back into balance. We need to be yes. in balance with Mother Earth because that's our source. Our source exactly. is the sun and the earth. And if we're in balance with those two things, the sun, the earth, the winds, the water, the moon, the fire, like all of that comes together, the water, yes. all of that is part of you. You are yes. all of those elements. So exactly. if you're feeling in a rut, it's probably because you're out of balance. And the best way to get back into balance is to come back to nature. Exactly. You know, I always say, um, I, was, I was talking about this yesterday. I said, you can look at this whole COVID situation as a crisis or an awakening. And I'm looking at more of it as an awakening on so many different levels. Uh, of course, you know, the system is going through a reboot, but I feel like there are changes happening within and out, like, on so many levels. Um, yeah, it's like nobody nobody can work now nobody's so you're forced to be inside and to like um reflect and you know systems are changing and 
I think it's like a good, um, I think it's a great thing. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, there are some, some casualties, but um, I feel like it's more important now to keep yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually strong more now than ever. And this is a wake up call. So going to nature, eating right, staying around good people, positive energy, really focusing on those things will really help you. So keep your vibrations super high. It's really important because the media is just feeding you fear. And, you know, you can't subscribe to that. You can't feed into that. That's the truth. It's like your vibration is designated by the energy that you keep around you. So I feel like uh, we really got to take our time to make sure that we're aligned with that, which is form, that which is source. Uh, let's see. So someone from the fairies, I just started sharing my practice online through Instagram and YouTube. Any tips for growing your page? Is it time, luck, or promoting? I'll let you answer that. A mixture of all three, timing, luck, and promotion. I feel like uh, I honestly like, I don't even really know how I grew to be to where I am other than consistency and really just sharing, sharing your heart fully. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people like always put me in this box of being an influencer and I'm like, you're just being yourself. I'm just, I'm just being myself. I'm just, just helping people yourself. out. The more that mm -hmm. you can help people out, the more that you give, you will receive. That's the way Absolutely. that energy works. All energy is felt. All energy is, um, I would say appreciated. So think about that word appreciate, you know? Mm -hmm. So like we have to think about really utilizing our time to bring other people value. Mm -hmm. And the more that we bring other people value, the more that we're actually bringing our self value. So it's like Absolutely. That selfless lifestyle, like the, the Gandhis of this world, the Pramahansa Yoganandas of the world, the Iyengars of the world, all these people like spent their whole life giving, 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 giving. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. didn't look for anything in re return. You know, Einstein, like so many incredible people, Mother Teresa, like Amma, the hugging saint, all these people give. They didn't yeah. look for, you know, where am I going to get my next dollar? Who's paying me? Where's my money? Like they were just giving Absolutely. out of money. And not even looking for numbers. You know, there was no Instagram back then. There weren't, there wasn't any way to quantify exactly how exactly. their gift was being received. Now, mm -hmm. you know, we have all of these uh, ways to quantify, whether it's your bank account, whether it's your, you know, number that shows on your Instagram. Like on my Instagram, I don't know what update you guys have, but mine doesn't even show. It just says like uh, people liked and others or thousands of people liked and others. Like it doesn't even show numbers. So I don't even really care anymore. It's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just here to spread light and spread love. That's it. There you go. You said it, man. You said you said it best, Andrew. Um, someone said, when you understand that you are ready to share your experience and teach. I think she means, when do you understand? When do you understand? Ready to share your experience. Experience. I mean, for me, it's like a bubbling. It's almost like a, like, like, you know, like you get to the point where you've done something enough that you're like, oh, like, I got this down. And then like, you see someone do it and you're like, oh, I can help you out. You know, so I feel like um, really for me, at least, it comes to the point where like if I don't share, I feel stifled. Like I feel like I'm like, oh, like I feel like uncomfortable. Like, you know, like you get that like, gotcha. oh, like I need to like, I need to get out of this phone. Out. Like, I feel like one of the best ways to really learn also and to really embody the knowledge is to share. Yes. Absolutely. It's so true. So true. Uh, let's talk about your your amazing strength practice, like what, what it, how'd you get so, and, and, and this is more of like addressing the topic was um, how to take your practice to the next level. So what are your thoughts about that? And how did you get to the level where you are? Yeah, so essentially, uh, this kind of answers uh, discipline 24, seven, 365, yet again, the good questions. Um, so I've been practicing yoga now for 11 years. I'm 30 years old. I started practicing when I was 19. And um, essentially, I would say that it comes down to just knowing that you can visualize yourself better every day. So Absolutely. as you continue to visualize yourself better every day, you get into this idea of being able to positively change your body, your mind and your spirit through this little tool up here. 
And this little tool up here is connected to this tool that's right here. And so like each one of us is encoded, right? Our DNA is a code. And this code is really what helps to bring us to a deeper realization of our purpose here on this earth. And Absolutely. I feel that when we understand how to listen to that code, then this thing starts becoming the most powerful tool ever because it's mm -hmm. directing that energy directly into manifesting that which is your reality. Because mm -hmm. even just you looking at me here on the screen, like we're here having this conversation all the way across the world, right? Some yeah. dude imagined that in his head, this was going to be possible. Exactly. And decided to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So your imagination is literally that which is limitless. limitless. We limitless. have to start thinking in that perspective of not having any limit there exactly. is only possible exactly. everything that's happening right now is because someone believed it was possible someone believed it so thoughts become things exactly if you start believing in the possibilities of what you're creating of how you can help people of waking up and learning that you can be of service to others rather than just yourself just by going out there and sharing the information that you know and hold to be evident to those who are in need Absolutely. That's why it's more and, and stated beautifully, Andrew, that's why it's more important. You cannot feed into this, this fear because they know how powerful our minds are and we can sabotage ourselves. So really keep your vibrations super high, super strong. Only think about manifesting what you want and what you do not need. Mm -hmm. There's some amazing questions, man. Uh, so, so gorgeous to witness this conversation. My body is feeling quite strange eating meat again, but because I am exercising more, I be. And that's from Luis and Tura. Yeah, so so um, let's talk about where, where are you based now? Are, are you in Los Angeles? Are you traveling abroad? Because I see um, you're traveling everywhere. You're like all over the planet. So I'm, how does that I'm work? I'm always like? traveling, but due to the quarantine and the amount of uh, fear and just ridiculousness that's going on right now, I am not traveling. I am nice and grounded here in Costa Rica where the sun is shining, where the seasons are in full form, where we had the incredible thunderstorm last night and you can witness the energy and the power of the mother nature right here and she's yeah. still very so alive and in control and i feel like these are the places that i like to be is the places where i can look outside and feel nature i can hear birds singing i can grab a piece of fruit off of a tree i can go and jump in a waterfall like i think that you know realistically what's happening right now is that humans have gotten to the point where we've created so much material around us that our whole frame of vision has become disconnected from nature. So because we've disconnected ourselves so much from nature, nature's like, okay, we're going to remind you how mm -hmm. integral nature is to your existence. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Again, a boy was on the eye was showing me, telling me that you got to get back to source. You got to get yeah. back to source. Yeah. You have to get back to source. Uh, this is not really life. How would you keep yourself grounded when living in a stressful, tight space environment within a breaking relationship? Well, it sounds like, you know, those are two very big, uh, not obstacles so much so, but they're, they're challenges. And I feel like when you're in a space of challenge, it gives you the opportunity to be creative. And if you're in a space with someone who is uh, not helping you lift to your highest vibration, um, yes. then you've got to find a way to either get yourself out of that space or um, make amends to make a compromise that works for both of you so that you can live harmoniously together. Um, I've been in situations where I've been with, you know, people who I absolutely dearly loved who I couldn't live with, you know, who, you know, the, the amount of time that we lived together had come to an end. And I feel like every relationship that you have is a lesson. And if you really choose to take the time to listen to what that lesson is hoping to tell you, then you can embody that lesson and then move on to the next chapter of life. Um, so my, my best advice for that situation would just be to take the opportunity to really listen to what your heart is telling you and see if there's some solutions as to how you can spend more time elsewhere. Maybe you go and volunteer to deliver food to the homeless, or maybe you go and, 
you know, start doing something that gets you outside and into the interaction with people who are in need. I feel like when you're in service, that's when you're truly allowed to shine. And that's when the creativity comes back to your mind. Absolutely. Well spoken, Andrew. Um, and aside from your, your uh, yoga practice and your handstands and your mindset, you're an amazing um, acro yogi teacher as well. Um, how did you get into this practice? And I who, love who, who inspired you? Who's your mentor? Like, who inspired you? To do this? <laughs> my, my mentor is Jason Niemer. Jason Niemer. Jason Niemer. Yes. Boss. Great boss. Such an incredible. Yeah, he's person. a boss. He's yeah. a boss. He's, but he's the, the founder of acro yoga as we know it. Um, he basically was an acrobat, an Olympic uh, acrobat who practiced uh, sports acro and does like hand to hands and all types of different epic, uh, you know, cool tricks. And he met this beautiful woman named Jenny in uh, the wonderful place of Sacramento or no, not Sacramento, San Francisco. San Francisco, and yeah. And fell in love. She was a Thai massage specialist and he was acrobatic dude. And they started mixing acrobatics with Thai massage and thus acro yoga was born. <laughs> That's amazing. That's yeah. incredible, man. I felt like, I felt like Jason needs more credit as far as establishing this, this amazing concept of movement. I feel like it's like a lot of people, like, you know, like a lot of people need more credit, <laughs> you know, you need more credit. Jason needs more credit. A lot of <laughs> You know, I'm not kidding you. Like a lot of people put in a lot of work and, and really, I feel like, you know, with this technology and the way that things are working is that people pay for recognition rather than earning it. And mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, in a time where connection is more vital than anything, we really got to give praise amazing. to those who are really connecting with their hearts. And so I really thank you as a teacher, as an inspiration for my handstand practice, for oh, too, stepping man. outside of my comfort zone of movement. And I really thank Jason as well for sharing the wisdom of what it feels like to connect with another human being and to yeah. make that connection deep from the heart without any, um, you know, perversion of sexuality, no perversion of, you know, lust, just straight heartfelt connection. Yeah. Thank you, Andrew. It's, it's much appreciated, man. And you know what? This is why I had you on, because you're such a light, such a powerful force. And I had to, even more now than ever, have have uh, amazing human beings share their knowledge and their stories, because it's what's, it's what's needed now. It's really. Uh, so um, I don't want to take any more of your time. So can, can the love be the new currency? How can we measure it? Well, that's a beautiful question. I think love has always been the currency. It always will be. It's the number one always currency. Will be. When all these dollars and other BS cease to exist and when all of our buildings are somewhere in some sand, like, you know, all that we'll really be able to hold in our hand is our heart. Exactly. That's what matters most. So, you know, beyond exactly. all, that's actually how we, we measure value. If you think about it, like if someone gives you uh, a, a piece of fruit, what would you say? Thank you. What would you do? Yes to show that action of thanks, you would probably give them a hug, you know? Yes. So essentially Absolutely. like, that's what we really got to think about is, is, is we got to come back to sharing love and not be yes. afraid to share love because during this whole social distancing time, I feel like a lot of people are completely afraid to be themselves, which is mm -hmm. to share love. And if you're feeling healthy and you're feeling vibrant and you want to continue to share that, which is the heartfelt intention to another human being, I think that you should absolutely have the right to do so because you are in charge of your life. You're in charge of your wellness. And if someone is going to tell you otherwise, then completely, completely irrelevant. They don't have any right to tell you otherwise. You are a, a sovereign being of this. Earth. Absolutely. No one can give you a right. It's already instilled within you. It's already instilled. Exactly. 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 You said it best. Wow. We have so many questions, Andrew. I, I didn't even know where to start. Like <laughs> I, so many uh, comments. I don't know. Um, so not, I don't want to keep answer. your answer. Uh, never mind. That's not a question. <laughs> you go with the questions. You keep on the questions. Uh, Shivanji.11 wrote, thank you both for sharing so much love and high vibrations. Thank you for that. Yoga XO. Andrew, love you, little bro. 
uh, from Ness Napo, how much strength compared with your weight you have to hold a handstand for 30 seconds at least? Um, I think that's like a, that's like, that's like asking like, oh, like how much strength do you need to hold your breath for a minute? <laughs> up to you. You're, you're, you really <laughs> Every have to. Different. Every Everybody's body. body's different. It's so true. Like whenever I cheat someone, I say that everybody's bone density, uh, density, structure, it's completely different. So it's about you finding your way. Have the tools, have the foundation, but find it your way. Uh, yeah. Love and compassion is what we need to project. My Capoeira training starts now, but it was really lovely to listen to both of you. Keep on shining and sharing these beautiful vibes. Pira Vida, lovely greetings from Austria. Beautiful. Yeah. That's right enough. Shabawoy J says that she was like, uh, were you flexible when you started yoga at 19? My answer is definitely not. I couldn't even touch my knees in a forward fold. I was like <laughs> over. Yeah. I was sprinting, you know, I was sprinting all the time on the soccer field. So like my whole back body was like, all the muscles are tense, they're toned. I had little to no flexibility. I could barely even sit cross-legged on the floor because my hips were so tight. So Same here. I, transformation, you know, <laughs> YouTube. Oh my God. I, bro, I had zero flexibility on my life. I started doing yoga and I was like inspired. I'm like, oh my God, I can do this now. And then I just, that process gave me more inspiration and like motivation to keep on training. And it just got better and better and better. And it just excelled. And I was like, oh my God, like what else is possible? So I just kept doing it. And then I just got my flexibility through that. But like most importantly, I understand, I, I actually understood the connection of mind, body and spirit through that process, which is really important because at first, I just wanted, you know, the aesthetics, but understood that it's the mind-body connection as well. Uh, yeah. This is an excellent question. Uh, from Jade Fox, my good friend Jade. Yeah. She is, do you follow Yoruba and all the nature's Orishnas? That's what she asked. Andrew, do you follow <laughs> Yoruba and all the nature of Orishas? From the I honestly, sorry, Jay Fox. I don't even know what Yoruba is or Orishas. I would, I would, nature Orishas. I'm not sure. You'd have to, I would have to know the definition to give you a solid answer. Yeah. Okay. We'll do a couple more questions and I'm going to let you do because, because I know you're busy. I'm busy, but I wanted to share. Uh, yeah. We have a question from the Dolphin Boy. Have you been receiving any downloads? Do you see something major happening in the material world in the next month or sub to work? I'll let you uh, answer, then I'll answer that. I, I will answer that. Um, so I'm, I'm going to answer a few of these other little questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm going to have more lives. Watch my stories. There's going to be more lives. Every mm -hmm. Tuesday, I do a permanent live on the Connect community. If you haven't joined the Connect community, join the Connect community. You just go online, www.theconnectcommunity.com. Super simple. Um, also going to be doing more lives with um, Vibe Source and with Vegan Fitness. Vegan Fitness, the next live that I have is coming up on Saturday. We're choosing a time right now, so I'll announce it on my Instagram. You can find everything there. Um, am I planning to come to India? Yes, I plan to come to India. I love India. I'm actually planning to come to Varanasi sooner than later, as soon as this whole border situation uh, clears up. And how do you personally strengthen your faith? Every single day, pray. Every single day, Absolutely. give gratitude. Every single day, share your heart. Mm -hmm the best thing that you can do is be a moving prayer. Your whole entire body is a prayer wheel. Move mm -hmm. it as exactly. such. Make your breath move through each and every limb of your body. Thus, you become a prayer wheel. Absolutely. Be Say it great. perfectly, man. Say <laughs> it perfectly. Andrew, that's why I had you on. And then so the dolphin play, you, now I'm going to answer your question, okay? Because yes. I've got this yes. poem that I'd like to read to you guys. Please share. Falls off the <laughs> I'll, read, I'll read it to you in nature. Mine That'd be amazing. Bits, so that you guys have a little, a little taste of the nature that's around. Thanks for sharing it. Yeah. <sighs> this is where I'm at. Just to kind of show you guys, this is Charger Crystals. 
every first of the month and new moon and full moon. That's what I do. Um, get your crystals right. Keep your body aligned. Wear your crystals. Up here. Thank you, by Sammy. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. A little bit of nature for you guys. There you go. Uh, okay. Connect back to source. So the poem is called Solution for Energy Pollution. Beautiful. Oh, wow. Just got to wipe my screen a little because it's really bright here. But no here we problem. go. Um, the problem was faced with no solution or plan. Instead, we covered it up with gloves and Purell on our hands. Stock up on toilet paper as shit hits the fan. No one saw this coming. Perfect opportunity for the man. With time running short, you can hoard, hide, or scram. All of this virus talk is just another sham. As your eyes are distracted, get ready for the wow. 5G frequency, a thousand times stronger than four. Pow. That time. <laughs> That thing that you hold in your hand is a weapon now. Full on tracking device. You can only go where they allow. Taking away your freedoms as you stare and ask how. It's all a big magic trick when you're not in tune or aware. The rabbit's out of the hat on this bogus virus scare. What's sad is to see even the government wasn't prepared. Or is that what they want you to think so that they can show that they care? Fear and control, always a perfect pair. Now you're a sitting duck in a box in a dire state. If you watch the TV, it will lead to fear and hate. Stuck in your phone, distraction will only prorate that time that it takes for them to decide your fate. Vaccine, depression, 5G, any way that you turn, they're trying to turn down you so that you can't create. Haven't hugged a friend in weeks? Become the new norm. Drones sent to keep an eye out on this perfect storm. New world order or conscious awakening? I'm so torn. A perfect place for faith in God to be reborn. At the end of the day, no one has or will ever be in control. All roads. Sorry, just one second here. That's beautiful, man. <laughs> you guys can still see me, right? We're good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so. Uh, at the end of the day, no one has or will ever be in control. All roads lead to somewhere and looks like the death will be the toll. The truth of the matter is only God will know. So use this time of social distancing to grow. Deepen your self-practice. Take a meditative vow. You have control of your body, your mind, and your spirit, and the time is now. Healthy eating, reading, writing, yoga is how. Prepare your body and spirit for ascension as sweat drips from your brow. Today is the best time to plant that hope seed. Self-inquiry, deep prayer, devotion, practice is what we need. Fear or love, decide wisely on who you wish to feed. There is a light that shines from within. Let love be your creed. The earth will come into balance in harmony divine. Love is infinite, like uncertainty, space, and time. The present is a gift, and there is no rewind. Let's use this as an opportune moment to unite, create, and shine. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow, Andrew. That was amazing, bro. I knew. I got goosebumps from that right now. And it's like, this is why I knew to have you on. I, I always, like, listen to my higher self. And Aya helps me understand that more. Like, I'm really uh, connected with her now. And I just, like, I had to get Andrew. I had to get Andrew on, on this day, and it was, like, perfect. Like, exactly what people needed right now. 
you need to share this on your Instagram. You need to do like, I don't know. You need to share it. People are asking about I'll, you sharing it. I'll share it's it. Beautiful. I'll share it. I'll share it. I, I think I'm going to make it because uh, basically I'm going to start sending out two emails every single week so that people can tap into um, more of the high vibration stuff that the community that I'm part of is making that all the magical humans around the world are really, uh, I would say, being deprived from because realistically, like all of these uh, social media sources, like they're all controlled by uh, a higher you know, yeah. controlling. So of I'd much rather like send you directly the information that's coming directly from the source. Exactly. So simply, um, I'm going to start doing, yes, I'll post the poetry. Um, I'll probably post this one as like a spoken word that is attached to a video. Um, yeah, I think that's the plan. <laughs> you should definitely, yeah, you should definitely do that. You have to share it. It's, it's imperative. Like, Everything I've been yeah. reading from the 5G to the, the frequency and all that, like, you, you, you let it in the head. It's perfect. So any way that I can help share that, just let me know. I'm more yeah. than down to share yeah. it. So, man. Totally. And amazing. if you guys want to jump on the email list, just email me at andrew 7 Seely at gmail.com and just say, I want to join the community or whatever, whatever you want to put there, whatever you want to write. Like, we're in direct contact. My email is in my link on my uh, Dropbox, or not Dropbox, on my, on my IG it, it, as well. Entry. But it's just andrew 7 Seely at gmail.com. So just send a, a message there, and I'll put you on the email list, and I'll continue to share high vibration um, music. I have tons of playlists that I love. I, have, I love music, and I think that's kind of like my next expression is to get people's body moving through music. So I, I really want to learn how to eat today. Um, awesome. And yeah. That, that's awesome. a few of the things that <laughs> you're doing it man you know what this is the perfect time to end off on this note because this poem just this just said it so again i want to thank you for your time and your wisdom and your expertise and your love sharing uh it's an honor mm -hmm. to have you on man and you know what you keep doing your thing keep shining bro i always got your back yeah and thank you dolphin boy for recording it if you upload it to dropbox then i can send it out to everyone there you go bro Yo, man, yeah. you keep doing your thing, oh, brother. Thank you so much, Lamont, for taking the time to have this conversation. Thank you for curating the event. And I'm super excited to do more of these. And I really appreciate having conversation with you. And I see your light and always have and always will. Likewise. Thank you, brother. Much love, man. Yes, indeed. Blessings. Peace. Peace, bro.